Hey family, my name is Luke and I'm here with Eric Freedom. I am the head coach here at Reason Fitness and Eric is the founder of our gym. And together we have about 25 years of experience in coaching fitness, nutrition, and wellness. And our mission is to uh, here is to help develop happier, healthier people in the San Gabriel Valley and greater LA area. And today we are talking about three things to ruin your health and fitness. And we're going to reverse that and hopefully be as helpful as possible in trying to help improve your guys' health and fitness. Eric, you want to kick us off? Three uh, things to ruin <clears throat> your health and fitness. Yeah, I'll make it, I'll make it really simple. And, and actually, so I should really want but uh, mine uh, all have something to do with fitness, but they're more so life principles that you can take <clears throat> and apply directly to your fitness. All right. Okay. Let's go for it. So if I was to just want to tell someone, like, these are just what you want to do to tank your life, I would do these three things. First one is I would pursue cheap goals. The second one is I would, pr I would pursue cheap dopamine. And third one is I would just be a quitter. So <clears throat> the first one, what I mean is, I love that. The first one is just having cheap goals is like pursuing things that don't really matter. Um, and I think one of the biggest problems that people have with their fitness is they they go after pursuing a goal that they think they want, but it's actually not what they actually want. So one really really common one I see is someone comes into the gym or they say that they want to reach a particular goal. Yeah. Of losing weight, getting a six pack, getting right. more tone, getting more muscle. Usually what they really want is just Which are all okay yeah, things. Which are which are they're all great goals. They're all good yeah. goals, but they don't get deep enough on the goal. So that what they do is they create a really cheap surface area goal that isn't the thing that they really, really want. And then that gets in the way of their actual goal. So then they're constantly repeating the cycle of of not really being committed to the goal. So so you're saying not going deep enough on their goal means not figuring out like what, like why, why they want that goal? What is that? So what does that mean? Like yeah, so, so I'll give you an example. Like a lot of people will, <clears throat> for example, take weight loss, for example. And someone might say, you know what, I'd, I'd really, really like to lose. Like the average person statistically in America has about 15 pounds to lose. Uh, so everybody thinks they want to lose 10 to 15 pounds. But, you know, I've met plenty of people that have, uh, said that they want to lose 15 pounds, but when push comes to shove, it w like, you know, three months down the line, it wasn't actually that important. All they really wanted was to just feel better about themselves and have a, ha a habit or practices that reflect someone that feels like a healthy person. Sure, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> right, so defining, okay. defining what, what health means to you is very, very important. And we have obviously ah, objective yeah, baselines yeah. for those, but... I think having a personal definition of it yeah. is really important. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you're constantly pursuing someone else's goal. So it's going to be different for person to person, <clears throat> essentially. Yeah. So what I mean by having a cheap goal is it's, it's like a lot of people think they want to make a lot of money. Right? Okay. And I'll give, you, I'll give you this example. Uh, you could pay me a million dollars a year, work 40 hours a week uh, at a job that I don't want. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Even if that's that, – that's significant. That's – multiple times my income right now. I still wouldn't do it because it's not in line with my goals and what I want to accomplish and what I want to see myself doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure, yeah. Right? But a lot of people go and pursue a job that they want or they think that they want because that job simply just pays more. Yeah. Right? So that goal is actually kind of cheap if you think about it. Yeah. Which ironically, it's you're trying to make a lot of money. So, like, they never discover <coughs> why they want to make more money yep. in the first place. And because of that, it kind of backfires at them when yep. they get there or something like that. Yep. Love it. Love it. Yep. What's number two? So, second one was just having uh, cheap dopamine hits. And this isn't something that I re even really discovered for myself until maybe, I don't know, like five, five, six years ago where I started really thinking about, like, why I wasn't breaking through certain habits. So, to give you, so let me give you examples of cheap dopamine. So, examples of cheap dopamine are, like, uh, social drinking, <clears throat> doing drugs, uh, porn is a good example of one. Um, it's anything where it's like a vice. Oh yeah, yeah, I said that. It's just looking at me right now. So <laughs> it's it's any example where it's like vice dependency. Love it. And yeah. and he, and here's my here's my argument for why is when you when you pursue this, it's the easiest way to go ruin your life and and walk away from having a healthier life 
And this isn't like a morality thing that I'm trying to talk about right now. Literally, this is going to affect your health in a negative way because you're literally wiring your brain and your body to rely on very, very cheap dopamine hits, easy access hits. Yeah. You don't have to earn it. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm feeling a little lonely. Let me just, you know, jump on my computer, click, click. Oh, man, I'm good to go, right? Oh, man, I'm not feeling too good. Boom, let me pound a couple of drinks. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm good to go. Oh, you know what? I had a really rough week. Boom, let me just uh, do some crazy hard stuff, right? Uh, crazy drugs, <laughs> right? And, like, like it's like, I, let me yeah. escape my reality. And I'm literally, yeah. and, and I've coached people in this setting before, too. It's like, you're really creating a wiring for you to, to rely on this hit and you don't have to earn it. It is not difficult to earn this type of dopamine. Yeah, love it. Right? Love it. So, um, yeah, so, so that's another way to ruin your health and fitness in a really, really easy way is just pursue easy stuff that, that doesn't, uh, that you don't have to earn. Yeah, yep. Right? So. Love it. Um, well, so, so let, me, let me ask you one question and yeah. try to do your best to try to answer this as, as uh, simply as possible, but, like, wh- what is the value in having to earn it? I think the biggest thing of like dosing discomfort or or creating a um, a pattern of having to do difficult things to earn your dopamine, <clears throat> the, the biggest takeaway or the biggest thing that you actually teach yourself is to number one, delay your gratification. So like you have to you have to wait to, to earn something. Um, and then the dopamine hit just hits so much harder when you there was a struggle to get it. Uh, like build, 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 uh, reward. Yeah. Right versus zero build, easy reward, and and what happens is like it, it's why it's hard for people to work out when you first start. It's really really difficult because maybe you don't feel it right away. You might unless you got a really good workout right off the bat, you feel that endorphin hit right away. Yeah, right? that's one that you can feel right away. But usually the results, um, and the confidence that it breeds and all the good things that come with it, those take time. Yeah, right. Totally. The dopamine that you get, like I don't want to sound like super arrogant, but like the confidence that I feel. Is not one that I could just I could have just bought. It was it couldn't just been given to me. I have earned this level of confidence, and my wife calls it arrogance. Like over decades of life. Yeah. Well, it can be misconstrued as arrogance. Yeah. No, we're just, we're just making fun of my wife right now. But <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. But yeah. but but yeah. That's why it's like we got to earn our dopamine. For sure. So I, I would say yeah. The, one of the things that you could do to just like really tank yourself is just pursue cheap hits. Love it. Three. Okay. The last thing is just uh. Uh, being a quitter, like I know so many people that just love to start things and have no perseverance. Right? It's it, it kind of ties into the the second point of having cheap dopamine hits. Is like you can't wait things, you can't see things through. So the second there's any kind of friction, oh, this gets a little bit hard, I quit. Yep. And I look for the next thing. So you've seen this, I've seen this. The friend that's always looking, oh, I'm on this diet now. Oh, I'm doing this program now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've had friends that have literally quit jobs yeah. nearly every year. Yeah. Always looking for the next thing. Yeah. Why? Because they, they've created a pattern of quitting. Yep. And then the, the deepest, the, what I hate, like, the reason why, like, the, 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 I probably quit a handful of workouts in my entire life. Maybe sub six, sub six workouts. In my yeah. entire, like, I stopped doing the workout. And I remember when I reflected on each of those workouts, I thought to myself, man, like, I'm, if I keep doing this, I'm literally creating a pattern of belief that I quit things. Totally. And I think that's a really dangerous mental pathway to go down where, and, and then obviously physically, it's going to eventually affect you too, where you just quit your stuff that you do. Yeah. Whether it's workouts, jobs, relationships, right? When a friendship gets too difficult, ah, let's forget that guy. I quit, right? So it's, or you just become someone that quits everything that they do. Yeah. So yeah, those are my top three. Yeah, I love it, love it. Cheap goals, cheap dopamine, and being a quitter. How about you? Um. All right, so you took like two of my three, so I'm gonna go ahead and shoot off the hip here. But um, uh, I want to hear your three. We can just reiterate them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I wrote down five just in case. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure. I wanted to make sure that. Um, so the first one is never commit. So essentially, like mm. never, never commit to anything ever. Um, and I think the, one of the reasons why is because like, if you, if you are someone that chooses to commit, then you're going to choose to continue doing the thing that you need to do in your health and fitness journey for your goal, regardless of how you feel about the result, regardless of how you feel about the improvements, regardless of how you feel about like, 
I don't know, like how you look in the mirror, right? You're going to continue to do the actions that it takes to get to where you want to be regardless of whatever thing that you see temporarily, you know? And so that's how I'm like, all right, just be someone who never commits, you know? If it's easier to be someone who never commits because essentially what you're, what you're saying is I'm just going to be someone who never gives myself fully to any, any sort of task. Um, that, so that's that's number do, one. Do you have a case example of someone that, or like, I mean, I wouldn't use someone that's, I wouldn't use any names, but just yeah, someone that maybe you've worked with or or some examples that you've seen in in history where, like, people have done practice that because I think in theory, yeah, yeah, I want to believe that most people don't think that they have like commitment issues. Yeah, I think so. I've I actually coached someone probably around five years ago now, uh, or maybe maybe four years, um, four years ago now, where um, they didn't commit or they didn't want to be someone who commits. Um, and by the way, like, I'm going to just clarify too, like, commit doesn't mean, like, you give your life to it, right? Like, it's not, it doesn't mean, like, okay, like, like, nothing else matters in my life now, and this is the only thing that matters. Like, that's not what I mean by commit. What I mean by commit is, like, committing to um, not not an outcome, but being a person who is willing to dedicate yourself to a journey, I think is really what I'm, sure. what I'm, what I'm talking about. But like I coached someone four years ago who was afraid of committing because they were afraid of failing. They were afraid of like not being able to see what they wanted to see on the other side of commitment, mm. right? And so I think that that is a very, very common, I think, um, uh, experience to have is like, well, I'm never going to commit because I never want to, like, experience failure or I never want to experience, like, any source of, um, I don't know, like, I don't want to experience or even, like, challenge, I would say, too. Yeah. Like, I don't want to challenge myself. Yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable with where I'm at, you yeah. know, um, which, by the way, is okay, too. But I would say it's it's okay to be comfortable with where you're at and not take action as long as you're okay with that, you yeah. know. Um, but if you're not okay with that, then I would reevaluate whether or not you're committed to anything. Yeah, it's almost like, we, like we're afraid to commit because we preemptively fear the result, whatever, so whatever it may be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the second thing that I would say is ask people to encourage your spontaneity and your inconsistency. So ask as oh many people as possible. Ask as many people as possible, usually the ones that are closest to you, to encourage as much spontaneity and inconsistency as possible. Um, so this actually kind of like relates to the cheap dopamine hit that you were talking about, number two, um, which essentially is like, if you ask as many people as possible who are closest to you, the people who are like our most intimate and proc in, in proximity to you, um, like if I ask my mom, my wife, and my brother to always ask me to do something different in my diet, in my nutrition, right? Always ask me to do a different thing with you every every seven days. I want you to ask me to do something different for you. This is the best way to ruin my health and fitness, sure. like guaranteed. Because what I'm doing is I'm avoiding any source of accountability yeah. that it takes for me to get to where I want to be, yeah. right? I'm asking for less and less of it. Um, yeah. So that's that would that's be number good. two for me. That's a good one. Um, and then I would say number three is um, uh, think about think about your health and fitness as the fastest possible sprint you can think of, not a marathon. Um, go as fast as possible to get there. Do your best to not go as slow to not go slow at all. Um, and also expect it to come as fast as possible as well. Yeah. Um, I would say like this is also a really huge misconception is that like you know um, sometimes. Uh, I'll meet with new people who come into the gym and the first thing that they say is like, I want to lose, like someone literally told me the other day, I want to lose 15 pounds or they said 12 to 15 pounds, 12 to 15 pounds as fast as possible. And I said, okay, well, how fast is as fast as possible for you? And they were like, well, I've done it before in a month. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's pretty good. That's, I mean, that's yeah. actually pretty impressive if you yeah. think about that, more of on uh, a disciplinary level. Yeah, like but I'm like, three to four pounds a week. Yeah, about three or four pounds a week. And I'm like, if you really think about that, that's like 12,000 calories of deficit per week. Yeah, um, incredible. And so I'm like, okay, great. <coughs> but 
I asked them like, how long were you able to keep that off? And they said two months. And then I had to, I, ga- I started gaining weight back. And I was like, how are you like net positive or net negative weight are you from when you had started your journey? They were net negative, AKA they had gained back about six pounds after they had started their journey. So they started at 175, I think, and they were like 181. Um, and although they're capable of losing the 12 to 15 pounds, because they didn't take their time, because they sprinted, they weren't able to sustain all the progress that they saw, you know? And so I think that that's, that's the best way to ruin your health and fitness, go fast. And then, and then on top of that, keep going fast at different things so that you can essentially never, you can convince yourself that nothing will ever work for you. Yeah. I've seen that a lot too. And it kind of ties into the third point that, that that I made earlier about being a quitter it's like it's almost like you're unintentionally being a quitter because you're you, you're doing all yeah. these things you're getting there really fast and then you fall back and you feel like you're a failure so then you're kind of like reiterating this idea of like man maybe I'm this person that just like can't get it right I yeah. always like I can work really really hard and you, I'm doing my best but for whatever reason I always take two steps back yeah so you start to create this narrative that like I'm a failure totally in some way totally yeah, yeah. and I think what it what it'll come back down to is like okay, maybe it's not that I want it to look like a marathon, but, like, what is actually a realistic timeline, right? Like, let's define a realistic timeline for yourself, which actually goes to my last one that I'm going to share. It's This is an off one. I know it's number four and we're out of time, but the last one is ask a different person who is uneducated in health and fitness every day for what to do with your health and fitness. Ask someone who can't do it, right? Or ask someone who is not, who is not equipped to be able to give you that. Mm-hmm. And so, but yeah, we'll end it there. Yeah, and if you want to just uh, not not ruin your health and fitness, do the opposite of what we talked about. Reverse engineer. We'll see you guys soon. Stay healthy.